right. Okay, so I'm going to be talking to you about Network Insight for Cisco ASA. Uh, I'm Chris O'Brien. I'm a product manager here for Network Performance Monitor, our uh, performance and fault product for networks, and Network Configuration Manager, our config backup compliance bulk config product. Um, I have a network engineering background, so feel free to ask me nerdy questions. Those are my favorite questions. Uh, and um, for most of my career, I spent uh, uh, in the field as a network engineer. Um, so I've sort of transitioned to product management, and I'm excited to talk to you about some of that today. The first thing I'll be talking to you about, uh, the first and main thing, is Network <clears throat> Insight. And I wanted to remind you of um, sort of what we're seeing here and why we're doing this. If you look at networks, uh, some, and I'm going to be cognizant of time here, if you look at networks some uh, 10, 15 years ago, it was primarily about routers, switches, and wireless access points, your transit devices, your basic transit devices, okay? And as uh, networks have evolved, firewalls, WAN uh, optimizers, load balancers, web proxies, these sort of modern network appliances have come into the network. And although these things are few in number, they're very, very critical. <clears throat> and historically, as an industry, SolarWinds included, we have sort of um, under-focused on these components of the network, and it kind of leaves a, a blind spot for um, network engineers. So that's a big problem. Um, I owe it to network engineers to provide fantastic network monitoring for them. So if you think about how to solve this, um, our first <laughs> chapter of the Network Insight story was F5. F5 is uh, LTM and GTM. And if you think about a, a load balancer, an F5 in this case, the metrics you need to understand the health and performance <coughs> of that device are fundamentally different than these other devices. So it's not about interface bandwidth. It's about many load balancers and how they work to together to deliver the top level thing, which is an application, okay? And there's virtual service pools, members, all of that sort of stuff. Those are the key metrics you need to understand the health and performance of those load balancers. So a similar story holds true, true for firewalls, and in this case, Cisco ASA firewalls. It's not about their interface bandwidth. That's important, but that's not the number one thing. What is important is how am I blocking or allowing traffic? How are my VPN tunnels over to partners and increasingly cloud service providers like AWS and, and uh, their VPCs? Uh, and there's HA functions, there's connection states, access lists. These are the important things to understand the health and performance of uh, firewall. So I'm going to show you that now. <clears throat> We've uh, released that functionality. Does that story make sense to you guys? Yes. Awkward pause until someone says something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Great. Um, okay, so we're going to jump over to a uh, ASA here. Um, and we'll look at the uh, primary ASA uh, in our demo environment. I'm not sure, have any of you guys seen the demo environment before? It's actually something kind of cool that SolarWinds does. All of our products, or most of our products, are just available uh, online to look at. You don't have to install them if you don't want to. So this is the new view for ASA. Uh, and there's a lot going on here. I have time to tell you about a couple of areas that I think are particularly unique. The first one is access lists. So access lists define how, what <clears throat> traffic the firewall allows in and out, right? This is the primary function of a firewall, and yet has, it has been notably missing from monitoring for quite some time. My fault. So uh, I'm working to fix that. So we'll get, take a look at a specific access list here. And the first thing I want to note is we are version controlling each access list. This is not rocket science. It's not an amazing new capability. What it is, though, is a simple sort of uh, acceptance that each access list is its own entity. So if you want to answer a pretty basic question like, how has the access I allow from the internet into my DMZ changed over the past six months, that is much easier if you uh, mm. version control each access list and you can sort of diff and see each individual change without the noise of the entire config changing, right? So we allow that here and then so once... It's like most IT organizations, I'm primarily interested in placing blame. Um, is that annotated with who made the change? Is that annotated with who <laughs> made the change? It is not. It is not. I think that's a fantastic thing. I, I would divert to TACX or ICE or something like that to get the, the name, but that is a notable missing thing. Um, the timing can be very precise because we have triggered updates for downloading the configs, but the name's missing. That's an interesting thought. I wonder if I can do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> for, security I'll have reasons, to think about that. for security reasons, you absolutely <laughs> want the name of who made the change. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. The reason being is there's a lot, and, and a lot of enterprises, even on almost every firewall, <laughs> actually controlled by, not by a person anymore. 
So if I have like 20,000 firewalls, I'm going to use a tool to do that. Yeah. If the tool is wrong, I want to know. But if the tool is not the one making that change and it should be done through the tool, someone did a one-off. Yep. Now I have a snowflake, now I have to go and fix it. Yeah, totally. So one of the challenges uh, with actually every product is how do you define the boundaries, the start and the end? In this case, we're defining the boundary as here's the specific change at what time, but then you have to go to another tool to find out who did it. I don't know if that's good or bad. It sounds like you guys would prefer the name right in there. I would prefer having who did what, when, where, and how. Yeah, I, available I, I want the name and I want the IP address. Sure, okay. Just a shared IP account. I appreciate it. So I guess there's a balance <laughs> between that because this is the Cisco iOS. And that's um, yeah. well, the ASA specific, yeah, but we ASA, but the, so why not? I, I'd be interested to see how that, that, I don't know if Cisco captures that, so I'd be interested to see how you guys would. Yeah, I'd I love think it's doable, um, but not done. So uh, returning back to this, so this is our access list viewer. There's a couple of things going on here, but I'll highlight uh, just a few things. One is um, you can expand these object groups, so anyone who has done this uh, by hand, your, your show run access list, access list <coughs> name, show run object group, object group name, that has a nested object group, show run object group, object group name. So it gets very um, sort of tedious. So here we can just drill into those object groups. As they uh, have nested object groups, you can continue clicking down. You can compare those over time because how the object group changes has a lot of impact to how your policy changes over time, right? The other thing I'd like to highlight is we do some analysis. So those of you who have managed firewalls that have complicated rule sets, you know there's potential for redundant rules and shadowed rules and all of this. And I've looked at access lists that are hundreds of lines and not very well sort of architectured and you know looked at them until my eyes are bleeding for trying to find out what is the sort of the administrative intent and the simplest way to achieve that intent. And so we have some of that automated now. Uh, it's called overlapping rules. So we can see, for example, this rule three is partially redundant to rule number two, okay? So there's some redundancy there. There's sort of two different sets that we detect. One is redundant, either partial or full. So you're trying to take the same uh, packet and do the same action to it, so you probably don't need that rule. Uh, the other one is shadowed, and what that means is you're trying to take the same pack <clears throat> packet and take a different action, which is much more dangerous, right? Because that's your administrative intent is actually not being achieved, um, whether you know it or not. So that's some of the stuff that we've built into the access list uh, viewer that should make it easier to um, sort of optimize your access list. So that's a very quick overview of access lists, a very important technology service provided by any firewalls, but specifically Cisco <clears throat> ASA here. Well, I have a question. Yes. Sis, this is, you're saying access list in Cisco ASAs, but if I'm using a Cisco switch, it's the same exact access list, or can be, ACL. So you have a way to, can I target not an ASA, but any Cisco switch and say, <clears throat> give me all your access lists? So, uh, Cisco iOS actually does use a different <coughs> syntax, slightly different. A lot of the same rules apply, but a different syntax that's today not supported. Um, we are working on uh, Network Insight for Cisco Nexus. Nexus has access lists, so something we're thinking about. Well, all, not Cisco, all of iOS has access lists. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh. And in that case, Nexus matches the syntax of iOS, so that may be more broadly applicable. Because this is not. it would be really interesting to say, okay, here's an ASA. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be controlling all my firewall rules, but now behind that ASA, I have these 17 switches all doing their own stuff that the firewall is also supposed to be doing. Now I have like VLAN layer three stuff going on yeah. inside the switches. It never makes it to the firewall, and I have these all these collisions happening. That really messes up a network. It'd be really cool to have one place to say, "Hey, it's all supposed to be going here. Why isn't it?" Yeah, the the sort of whole environment perspective is something that's. Um, really exciting, but the level of work you have to do to in get analysis for a single vendor, in this case a single model line, is significant. So we're starting sure. with this. Yeah, and I guess that was my follow-up question, or my original question is why, why Cisco ASA versus anything else? Uh, when I think about a lot of what your story has been today has been big picture, big cloud, and this seems extremely focused. Yeah, so this on, is the depth side of that story, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. 
This is the depth, not the breadth. So what, what's broken for me is if you're going to go in depth for one specific area, I'm, there's, yep. at least for me, there's a value disconnect from SolarWinds saying, here's our big story on perf, on the perf stack, mm -hmm. and then <coughs> it just, this seems like a weird place to go in depth. The question and I don't is, know if that's driven by customer demand, like why ASA? I think yeah, why deep here? Yeah, why deep I, here? This why, seems like, yeah. oh. So I think it's ASAs are super popular, and this feature is designed toward the network engineer persona. So definitely a different persona there. But Joe, <coughs> do you have any comments? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it is a lot driven by demand from customer, right? So even if you think about uh, the Cisco ASA, the, not the Cisco ASA piece, but the F5 portion, that's how kind of we started launching uh, Network Insight. Obviously, you know, me being a technologist, I'm going to want to do everything, the latest, greatest, kind of that thing. Um, but contrary to wanting to just go do that, because I don't think it's the right thing for the company, uh, we do look at, and, and all the PMs and all the engineers do take part in the THWAC community, and a lot of times we go out there and we just pull, like, hey, look, what are the type of things that you guys are running into? When we do the next specific device support, what would you like? And this is the one that bubbles up to the top, and that's how it made the list. For you, is it firewalls that are surprising or this firewall? That's this, uh, this firewall. This firewall. Like, like okay. This, yeah. so I, I actually did a lot of research into that, and the contrast for me was tons of noise and a lot of new deployments going to Palo Alto. However, by far the largest user base, ASA. Yeah, and this is, to be honest, this is a pain. I've had to do audits of a thousand firewalls. It's awful. And it's a horrible job that I'll never do again. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know big com I know other companies that won't touch Cisco ASAs with a 10 foot pole, and they're massive, massive deployments. Yeah. This is part yeah, of which the is reason. why I'm asking why Cisco. Yeah, this is not all, but this is the leader in that space. They have the most firewalls deployed. We can talk about the specific data point uh, and uh, analysts that I'm using to drive that. and after this though. <laughs> um, so for VPN tunnels, the only thing I'll note here is, um, I think there's a lot of good information. The hardest thing to get right on this page is VPNs by nature are on-demand service. So just because the service is not up does not mean that VPN tunnel is, is down, is sort of red, okay? So how we solve that to produce a simple story for our user, which is the left-hand side, is this thing red or green? is we introduce state tracking so that we can see, has negotiation been attempted? Did that succeed or fail? Has the VPN tunnel ever been up? Has interesting traffic been seen? All of those sorts of things drive that simple uh, result or conclusion that we're showing to users and that you can alert and report upon. So I'm kind of out of time on Network Insight. There's a whole bunch of other stuff I'd like to talk to you about for Network Insight. Um, I do wanna talk a little bit about NetPath. You guys probably, I think, I re remember at least some of you uh, in the discussions about NetPath. So NetPath, as you may recall, is a, a way to understand the performance and the path that you're taking to reach a specific service, reach an application. Uh, this is often a service out on the internet, um, something like Salesforce. So we'll go and discover that service with an agent at the source, discover that service, all the nodes in between that you depend on for that service to work, and then we'll attempt to find root <clears throat> cause. This is an interesting sort of contrast where I see PerfStack as the expert's tool to sort of go digging through all of the data, but it requires expert guidance. NetPath will attempt to do that for you on the network side, okay? Um, so, a couple of updates there. Uh, I gave you an update about how broadly uh, we've seen uh, application of this technology in our um, customer base last time. I think that was about a year ago. We had seen over 100 paths <coughs> being monitored with this tool, um, over 600,000 sort of views into sp specific networks through all of those paths. Uh, and that usage continues to grow. So, we've taken two actions. The first one is we noticed a problem which is We've solved this for enterprise customers, but we have a lot of MSP customers and they can't get this functionality. So we have brought this into our uh, MSP uh, tool, our RMM tool uh, for SolarWinds MSP. That's actually in RC uh, as of February 12th. So you can check that out now. So for me, it's cool because it's this technology that we built and this sort of opinion we have about technology uh, moving forward to a new audience. The other thing is I started this story with 
Traceroute is one of the most popular network troubleshooting tools. I, I would guess the second most behind ping, right? Really, really popular. And it's super broken. It's super broken in terms of accuracy and completeness and um, speed and all of these sorts of things. So I'm very excited to tell you guys, um, we believe we have solved that. We are releasing a Traceroute NG based on NetPath technology. It's a CLI based tool and it's free. So everyone will be able to add this new tool to their tool belt and get more accurate, more complete data about what's going on with their network right now.